Hi all, this is Maria Clark at Sweet Willow Designs and welcome to my studio. Today we're painting this really pretty mandala using a stencil. Um, this stencil is available in my Etsy shop, this Mylar stencil, but it's also as a traceable in the SWD Joyful Mandalas Facebook group. So if you're a member of that group, you already have that traceable. And I'm using a heavy duty black cardstock. This stencil is so versatile, so I hope you stay tuned to the end so you can really take a look at the different ways that uh, I've used this particular stencil. Let's go ahead and get started. So the colors I have here are uh, Cadmium Yellow, Blue Harbor, True Blue, Vivid Violet, and Brilliant Purple. And you'll see as I go through the video, I decide to add another color, which is the Dioxidine Purple. So here's the stencil. And I'm going to be using a cosmetic sponge. This is just an inexpensive cosmetic sponge from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to cut it up because I don't need the whole uh, sponge um, in one piece. And I'm going to clip off a few of those corners just so it's not such a harsh line. Um, sometimes you want a little bit of a line, and I'll show that as we go through the video. But I want to soften it just a little bit. So I'm going to cut some of those corners and get rid of um, all that excess stuff, and I'm ready to paint. So I'm going to start with my cadmium yellow. And you'll notice that I put, I loaded the sponge, and then I dabbed it off. This is just traditional stenciling technique where you don't want a bunch of paint because it seeps under the stencil. So you load your paint and then dab it off. I use a paper towel to just dab some of the excess off and then I am able to apply it to my uh, to my substrate. Um, and so um, I'm just going to go ahead and apply that and get that cadmium yellow in the center there. And you see I'm just putting as much, I'm going as you know far out into the stencil as I, I think appropriate, but I'm just pretty much going for a um, you know a yellow center. And then I'm going to go in with the True Blue. I'm using the same sponge uh, because these colors are going to mix a little bit. And you can see then that I'm adding, or I'm sorry, I'm not the True Blue. This is a Blue Harbor. I'm going in with the Blue Harbor. And those colors are going to mix a little bit. We'll get a little bit of a green as the blue and the yellow uh, mix together. And I'm just going to um, cover up my next row of petals and go into the base of the, of the, uh, of the row above. And we'll just keep dabbing that lightly and for as much depth as we want. Now, sometimes you, you, you can go as light or as heavy with this as you want. Um, I'm doing pretty good coverage here, but there's some, you know, when you're applying some colors where you want a little bit of that black background to show through. And uh, so you can do as heavy or as light an application as you wish. The other thing that you can do is start from the outer edge of the uh, design and move your way into the center and um, that'll give you a different kind of layering effect. So I'm going in with the true blue and I'm just going to start dabbing that on and you can see that I'm starting to get a really pretty almost kind of stained glass type look here uh, because I'm not filling in every bit of that black there's a little bit of the black that's showing underneath the the paint. So I'll just keep applying that and putting as much depth on it as I as I feel like I'd like to have. And just apply it up so that it um, makes a sort of fade from one row of petals into the next. And now I'm going in with the Vivid Violet. And I happen to notice that um, I'm using a gloss enamel on this one, and that was just purely by accident. It was what I had on my table, and I didn't notice it was uh, gloss enamel until I was all, all the way into the painting. So that's fine. Use whatever colors actually you like. But you can see now I'm starting to get a, a little bit of that, um, that sort of um, uh, pop of the, um, the, the uh, violet color there a little bit on the more pink side and it's starting to blend in quite beautifully with the colors that are uh, beneath it and a little bit of mixing with the blue to create a purple. Keep layering these colors and you can go back over the stencil. You know, you can go, I actually will go back over it a little bit to just um, kind of relayer some of those and you see that I moved my uh, stencil just a bit 
I recommend that you maybe put some washi tape or something down. There's a sprays, uh, spray adhesives that you can spray the back with that are temporary tack, um, and then they're removable, and you can just take them out and um, uh, take the stencil off of the, the, in this case, the cardstock. I'm adding some of the Brilliant Purple to the outer edges of that last row of petals. This is so cool because um, there's so, I mean, the color combinations are, of course, endless. So the stencil is really versatile. And at the end, if you stay tuned towards the end of the video, you'll see that um, I've used the stencil three ways. And I wanted to show you that you can reuse your stencils. If they're, if they're a clean, simple design, you can reuse them. And the color, just the, by virtue of the color change and the designs, that, isn't that pretty? Oh, my goodness. I'm loving the way that's turning out. But just by virtue of the colors that you use and the media that you use, you can change the look of a very basic, elegant design. Now, I decided to go in with the dioxidine purple, which is a dark purple. And I'm doing that on the outer tips of these uh, last row of petals, just because I didn't think there was enough contrast. So um, I'm going to go in and really highlight the edge, outer edge of that tip of those petals. And that's really pretty. So we'll just keep dabbing that on. And getting a little extra shading. And there we go. Isn't that pretty? I love the way that looks. Lots of depth in those colors, and it's kind of a stained glass. You'll notice that there's a little bit of um, seepage under where the stencil was. So I'm going to clean that up just a little bit. Now, one thing I want to mention, this is heavyweight cardstock. It's just basic cardstock, but it is the heavyweight version. So it holds up a little better to the paint and doesn't buckle as much. So I always look for that heavyweight. I don't use it on every piece because it's you can't find it in some colors, but... This black um, works great and white, black and white are really easy to find. So I'm going in with a little bit of paint that I would normally use for my backgrounds on canvases and I'm just going to erase any sort of seepage that I have there. A little overspill and just clean up my lines a little bit. It's not absolutely necessary because we're going to dot over this, but I do think um, I wanted to get rid of some of those little stray bits of paint. So here's the stencil that we're going to start dotting on. I, of course, let this dry so that it's really well dried uh, and I don't have the risk of uh, moving any of that paint around. And we're going to move into the center here and we're going to start dotting this. Isn't that pretty? Just some close-ups of the colors of paint and how they blended together. Gorgeous. Okay, I'm using my L11 8mm and I'm going in with cadmium yellow and I'll just get my center dot on. Now I'm going in with my G6 4mm and I'll use very few dotting tools. I am not going to cover this up, every bit of this paint up with dots. I'm going to hopefully enhance the petal design with dots and I'm going to be using colors that are um, really close so it's not I'm not introducing a whole bunch of new colors. Uh, I'm using the same colors, and you'll see as we go through this, I'll mix a little bit. So I'm going to get those center of that first row of petals in, and then I'll use my nail dotter and the cadmium yellow, and I will just dot down to the center, the bottom, uh, through the center to the bottom tip of that petal. And now I'm using the Blue Harbor, which is the next color that I used. And I'm going to dot from the center up to the top tip of that petal. Just giving this a little bit highlights. And then to make it a little bit more cohesive, I'll use the Cad Yellow, the same colors I've been using, and just kind of dot down that black line to fill that in a little bit.
Now I'm back in with the Blue Harbor and I'm using my G6 four millimeter to create the top three dots at the tip, top tip of that petal. Now how you dot this is all your personal preference. I like to keep using the same tool so I go around and do my larger uh, dots and then I'll come in now with my smaller nail dotter. Uh, it's actually the largest of the nail dotters in my set. I had missed one of these yellow so let me go back in and finish, finish that. There we go. And then again with the, um, the Blue Harbor I'm just going to finish out that line and keep moving it through each one of the petals and a little dot at the top. Popping a little few bubbles there. And we're just giving a little bit of definition to these petals. Now what I want to show you is I'm actually going to start mixing some colors and I'm not going to mix them completely. I'm kind of doing like a bit of a swirl. So I'm taking some of that Vivid Violet into the Blue Harbor and I'm moving into my next row of um, petals. So I want to use this sort of mix of colors and it's going to be um, the, the paint that I'm going to lay down is really close in representation to the colors that are at my base. Um, and you could, of course, change this out if you really wanted the colors to pop differently. You could use a lot more contrast. I'm going for more similar coloring. But you can see that I've got a little bit of that violet and a little bit of that blue, and they're sort of swirled together, and I really love that effect. Now I'm going to do a little bit more. I'm just going to go a little heavier on the violet uh, because I want to have that to be the more dominant color. And I'll swirl it in, just using what's in my palette. And I'll go up from that main dot, the center uh, bottom of that petal, and I'll go up halfway, partway, with that mix of the violet and the blue har uh, the uh, blue harbor. Using the same color, the mix, I'll go up from the center to give it a more petal look. And now with the Vivid Violet, just plain, no mix here, I'll go from the top of the tip of that inner uh, petal down each side and then a dot in the center of that petal using my largest nail dotter. And we're just giving a little bit of depth by changing out the color to sort of replicate shading and how the colors might change if this were a, a flower petal. And now I'm going in with the Vivid Violet and my G6 four millimeter and putting three dots at the top tip of that petal. One thing about using the um, cardstock, you know it's not as forgiving as canvas, so you want to take that into consideration. Um, because if you get paint, if you smear it, you're pretty much going to have to, you know, I don't know that you, depending on how you might be able to recover, um, you might have to start over. So, you know, it's a little bit more, you have to sort of go a little slower. Now I'm using a mix now from that violet. This is again with the 
uh, violet and the vivid violet and the blue harbor and I've just um, used that same mix that I had been using to go down the sides of this petal. It's nice because you'll get a little few little subtle changes as you move through each petal. They'll be a little bit different depending on how much violet or how much blue you pick up. And now I'm going to go right above the, at the tip and fill that in with a couple of dots of that violet and blue mix. And just fill in a little bit of that space. Here's how we're looking so far. Now I'm using that same mix of violet and blue. And I'll just carry some of those dots up around the edge of that next row of petals. And we're just changing out the way that we dot this to give it a little bit of variety, give a little bit of interest. A little heavier on the blue um, in this particular mix, because you can see it contrasted against that previous row where it's a little bit more uh, violet of the vivid violet. This is a little bit more of just the uh, the blue. Now I've created a mix. I'm using my J10 six millimeter. I've created a mix of the true blue and the vivid violet, and you can see it changes the the tone a little bit there. And I'll put that use that J10 six millimeter to put a dot right in the center of this particular petal. You can see the subtle change in color. Again, this mix is with the true blue and the um, vivid violet. And now I'm using my largest nail dotter in that same mix and I'm just going around with a few dots to highlight that center dot there. I really like the way it's um, mimicking the colors underneath. It's really pretty, the base colors. Now I'm using my largest nail dotter and I'm going to walk some dots up the side a bit. Bring you in a little bit closer so you can see that. Now you can see that this is a little heavier on the violet. Same, I'm using my same palette. I'm just mixing in different proportions of the colors to get a little bit different look. So this is a little heavier on the uh, on the violet side. Now much heavier on the violet mix, but still a mix. And I'll just define the tip of that petal, giving very subtle changes in the color. I hope you really uh, try out this particular stencil. 
Um, I really enjoy this. This is a great design. It's very versatile. And um, as I mentioned, stay tuned at the end because I'll show you three different ways that I've used it so far um, to get very different looks. Now I will walk dots all the way around this petal in that channel there that uh, that's created by the stencil. Same size dots until I get to the end and then I have to go down a little bit so I just walk a couple. Just kind of filling that space. And we'll do that all the way around. Use as few or as many dots as you need to to fill in the space that you have. Again, this is with the mix. Sometimes a little heavier on the blue, sometimes a little heavier on the violet. Just enough to give yourself a bit of a contrast. But I really like the effect of the, um, the swirled paint because it kind of still mimics the underlying where I did the sponging to get the base layer on where the paints are not completely mixed. They're sort of overlaid. So I think that's really a pretty look and it gives you a lot more interesting color too. And some variety because the color changes depending on how much of one color you pick up as you move along. Okay. Now I'm going in with my uh, G6 four millimeter and putting another dot in the center there. Same uh, swirl of colors. And I'll walk a couple dots up. And it wasn't completely, it didn't have enough, I think, fill, so I went ahead and added just a few more dots just to fill it in a little bit. I don't want to fill it in completely again because I want that color to show through, but this one needed, I think, a little something. So many possibilities to use your favorite colors. All right, now I'm going in with Brilliant Purple and my G6 four millimeter and just filling in a little bit of space there in each of those sort of corners of that petal. Though so this is my final petal. And using a mix of the Brilliant Purple and the Blue Harbor. I'll just walk a few dots out to do that, def define that edge. There's not a lot of high contrast here. These colors are pretty similar. Um, and that's the look I'm going for. And again, you can, you know, however much contrast you want to add if you don't think there's enough definition or contrast you just amp up the contrast for the colors that you choose and then we'll walk a few dots up for the center of that petal and again just we're just shaping this petal now I'll go in with the Vivid Violet, and this is not a mix, this is just straight violet. 
and add a little bit more veining on this petal. This is the Blue Harbor. Uh, actually, this is a little bit of a mix. And um, I'm just adding another row of veining, just following the line of the previous rows that I placed. A little bit of a curve to them as they move out from the center to the edge of the petal. And back to the violet, a little bit more veining. Now I will use my G6 four millimeter, and this is a mix of the violet and the um, Blue Harbor. And I'll put my first three dots at the very tip of that, outside tip of that petal. And that's a nice contrast against that dioxidine purple that we put down. And now I'm going in with my nail dotter and I'll do a few of the same size dots until I think I can walk the dots down to the, meet the um, previous row. Now I'm ready to go in with my next row and again a mix of the Vivid Violet and the Blue Harbor. Now I am way heavy on the violet on this one to give a little uh, change to the color. Same pattern essentially three of the dots with my G6 four millimeter and then I'll uh, use my largest nail dotter to fill in some of that space and then walk a few dots to get to the to the end. Now I um, started in the center of this particular petal and then on the outside edge so I would know how much space I had left because at this point I can add this row and stop. I will actually add another row but if I didn't have space I could have just stopped right with this row and then left it alone and it would look great. 
Um, so I try to set some parameters for myself, if you will, some borders, so I can fill in the space as appropriate and change out the size of my tools if I need to. Now I'm going in with the Vivid Violet and just using my largest nail daughter. I've got some same size dots and then I walk a few down to the edge. I'm actually doing my voiceover on this and it's mesmerizing to watch these dots go down. That's why it gets so quiet. <laughs> it gets quiet in my studio for sure uh, when I'm painting because I, I really get in the zone there. Now I'm using a small one of my uh, nail daughters and just put three little dots at the tip to pull those out just a little bit more. And I'm using the uh, Vivid Violet. Isn't that variegated, that variegated color? The color mixes are so pretty. All right, you guys, that's it for the base part of my design, and I think that's really, really pretty. Let's go in and take a little closer look at some of this. Yeah, that looks great. I love it. I love these colors. So I let that dry, and now I'm going to go in and do some top dots. I'm going to use the same technique of swirling these paint colors together to create a new color. So I've got a little bit of the CAD yellow and I'll put a little bit of the Blue Harbor in and I'll just mix those. I'll swirl them, I won't actually mix them completely, but I'll swirl them a little bit so I get that same kind of variegated look. And then you can adjust the paint colors as you want to. Now, I didn't have enough definition, I didn't think, in those blue dots there. They kind of disappeared too much, so I'll go over them with a little bit of that mix to try to pull them out a little bit more. And I'm just dotting right over the dots that were there on the base layer. I'm not going to do a whole lot of top dotting to this because actually I, um, I don't think it needs it. There's enough color and... Um, um, that I, I'm going to highlight a few things, but I'm not going to top dot a whole bunch. Go into the center with that mix. See very subtle changes. And then my nail dotter to highlight the center of those petals. It tones down the yellow just a little bit too. If you thought if you think your color is a little harsh, you can tone it down by using one of these mixes. And I'll put a little bit of that Vivid Violet. And a little bit of that Blue Harbor. Same technique of swirling these paints around. And you can see that it's not a huge difference, but it's just enough that there's just enough of that vivid violet to bring it highlighted a little bit more. Same color.
I'm just adding a little bit more highlighting to that particular row. That one really kind of disappeared on me too much. I'm going in with another mixed uh, top dot V's and this is heavier on the blue harbor so it's more blue on top of that on top of the uh, vivid violet and I'll just bring it out a little bit more Okay, and that's the completed piece. I think that's really, really pretty. And you know, as much top dotting as you want to do would be great. Now I mentioned that I use the stencil three ways. Here it is with the same sponging of color technique, but I've used uh, some Sharpie gold marker and some Posca markers to just do some doodling on this particular design. And then here it is when we did our original monochromatic. So you can get multiple looks depending on how you change out the color and the dotting patterns and that type of thing. So I hope you have enjoyed this particular project. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you joining me in my studio. Take care.